This video is sponsored by Squarespace. While some people out there are deciding to focus on the fake moon controversy, I'm not gonna waste your time with that. The S23 Ultra is simply the best phone I've used in a long time. But can I be honest with you, I also love my Z Fold 4. I'm still having a great time with this, but the overall package that I'm getting with the S23 Ultra and what this phone has been able to deliver for me in performance, entertainment, photo quality, video quality, you name it, it's just the best, it really is. I really don't understand why it seems impossible for some of these big YouTubers to recognize it, you know? I've always seen this moon thing as a, a bit of a party trick. It's not really a useful feature for me. You know, if I want a, a really good picture of the moon, I'll just Google it. Anyway, enough about them, enough about the moon. I'm Alex and I do down to earth, tech videos. <laughs> that actually, that was good. I mean, in my last video, I suggested that this might be a good time to switch from Apple to Android. So in a way, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I've genuinely switched and sold my iPhone 14 Pro Max on eBay. But there's a catch. It's more nuanced than that because of that ecosystem issue. And let me explain because I'm glad I'm not alone on this. I know you're thinking the Apple Watch, I'll get to it, don't worry. But many of you who may have come here from my Apple videos before, you shared with me in my comments that even though you've used Apple for a long time, like me, you'd love to try the S23 Ultra too. But you kind of stuck with the Apple ecosystem and it's really hard to leave it. And trust me, I've been there. By the way, let me level with you because I know not everyone makes this clear. This is not a Google, a Samsung or Apple specific channel. It's a gear and tech channel. I love tech, right? And as a tech content creator who covers multiple brands, is gonna be very difficult to 100% switch exclusively to a single brand. So when you hear a creator out there, someone like me saying that they switched or they're switching, I say take it with a pinch of salt. That's all I'm gonna say about you it. Know, to give you a balanced review, in my opinion anyway, you'd be silly to only cover one device, right? I mean, how could I ask you to trust my review on something if I haven't used or tested it against the competition? So outside of completely switching and experiencing the best in innovation and camera features, you know, without losing that comforting look of a blue or green bubble, you know, what can you do to keep some of those best of both world scenarios? And it's not just about messaging, right? Whatever ecosystem feature that you might like. I did loads of videos about how silly I think the whole Android versus Apple thing is, by the way, but I totally acknowledge that it is a problem. There's no point in me denying it, but hopefully my approach here might help you if you're in the same situation. The S23 Ultra has really taken me by surprise, right? The experience has been superb right from the start. I had my doubts. My first video about it was actually not great. You know, I was saying it's, it's the same old crap, you know, same design, but from a performance, a display, video, photos, multitasking abilities, this thing is a powerhouse. It's, it's the best phone out there. I, I'm sure of it. And like I keep banging on, I wish more people would be talking about this because despite me loving some of my Apple products, I have no issues to say, right? I think Samsung has nailed it with the S23 Ultra. For me, it's one of those phones that set a standard. There's like a before the S23 Ultra and after, right? This set the standard for me. I can guarantee if this had like an Apple logo in it, we wouldn't be hearing the end of it. You know, Marquez and those guys would be going on and on. Anyway. And I'm not gonna rant in this video, I've done that in my previous one. <laughs> There's something with the S23 Ultra that really surprised me though, which basically led to my decision to switch. Bro, get to the point. I will get to the point. I just need to give you some context first because I'm pretty sure that will help you. The S23 Ultra is so good, I really found no reason to keep my 14 Pro Max. The iPhone 14 Pro Max had already taken a back seat, if I'm really honest, you know, in my day-to-day -day usage, it was already almost collecting dust. I've been absolutely loving the Z Fold 4, that was an absolute revelation for me. And I've been saying myself that the ecosystem is not as much of a problem as you know people make it out to be, but and that's probably because I didn't realize that the iPhone still play an important part in how all my devices work, including this guy. But I'm looking at my Apple Watch and going, man, I really, I really love this watch as well. I hate that I love it, but I do. It's not perfect, it's expensive, and there's no point in me trying to kind of wear a Galaxy Watch, which I do have one as well, but there's no point in me wearing one just to say, here, Android fans, you know, I'm, I'm using everything in Android. No. I love my Apple Watch and I'm not changing. I'm not leaving. But then it hit me. Do I need a 14 Pro Max just to sync my watch? And that sounds like a massive waste. The answer is no, as you know, right? That's the whole point of this video. And I think you know where this is going, but I'll review that in a minute. And like I said, this is not becoming an Android only channel, right? I'm just really, really impressed by what Samsung has been doing. The Tab S8 Ultra, I mean, lives on my desk. This thing is, is like, I use it every day for work. Everything they're doing at the moment seems to be really top-notch stuff and actually giving features to us that 
that we've been asking. So they're listening to customers and they're giving us amazing hardware. What they didn't do so much on the design, you know, for me anyway, they have done in all other aspects. Some of you who use Samsung devices for a long time might not like this, but maybe they're becoming a little bit like Apple, right? The good Apple, where they're changing the design just a tiny bit. The only difference I'd say is Samsung, when they say improving the features, they actually are improving the features massively. In comparison with the S22 Ultra, which I sold as well, this is worlds apart for me. At the end of the day, Apple improvements on the iPhone to me feel like tiny increments or straight up gimmicks like the Monkey Island. I know I'm kind of overlooking the marketing fluff of Power Fusion, whatever the hell they're doing with the cameras on the iPhone. Sure, the iPhones are still premium quality. They've got that, that brand status attached to it and the sales back it up too, right? But, but that doesn't tell the full story for me. I'm looking at a device that looks great, takes awesome 4K videos and photos, but is less ergonomic to use, has a more distracting display, has pretty much the same software we've had 15 years ago. Okay, that's too much, but you know what I mean. And it still needs this weird cable that no one else uses, including Apple themselves, right? I appreciate that from a software perspective, the same could be said about Android, right? But from an evolution perspective, I feel like Android, and in this case, Samsung's version of it, One UI, has made the most progress. There's just so much you can do with Samsung devices right now. And, and for the first time for us here in Europe, you know, in recent years, the phone feels responsive out of the box, right? I don't need to wait for an update or whatever to, th there's been a couple of updates already, but I don't actually have any issues with crashes, slowness, or experienced any bugs. I'll talk about the shutter lag in a minute, but it's been a month now and I've been pretty happy with it. In contrast with iOS 16, I was having nothing but issues, you know, since the iPhone launching September or whatever it was last year. And only very recently, I started to see a smoother experience, but I had battery issues, I had crashing issues, but you know, a couple of weeks ago by after an update and you can't make a phone call, you know, I was getting some really weird stuff going on there. And to me, it just didn't feel like an Apple device should feel. And I totally appreciate that this could be just me trying to justify getting rid of it. But I was seeing those things way more often than in previous iPhones. And ultimately, credit where it's due. I'm just having a great time with my Samsung phones, you know? But like I keep saying, I love my Apple Watch Ultra, which got me thinking, what if I just bought a cheaper iPhone? The 14 Pro Max is a beast of a phone, but I use my Pixel 7 Pro to write my scripts or dictate it. And in the evenings, I use the Fold and the S23 Ultra because they're just nicer to use. The 14 Pro Max did have some apps that I still used a lot, like my password manager, two-factor authentication, all my banking apps, those can be really tricky to move. My bank actually requires me to call a human whenever I install an app on a new phone, but it's not impossible. So I've decided I'm gonna get the 13 mini. It's a fraction of the price of the 14 Pro Max, and I don't need that battery life, you know, just to sync my Apple Watch Ultra. I still have an iPad for those family members who refuse to move from Apple. Like I've shared in my previous videos, most of the apps that I use are cross-platform. And to be honest, they have come to a point where they're very similar now on Android and iOS, whether on iPhone, iPad, or my Tab SA Ultra here. It's very rare when I use something like Procreate. I do sometimes, you know, because that is truly only good enough on the iPad OS. Same goes for LumaFusion as well. It's really only good on the iPad OS, but when it comes to the 14 Pro Max, there was nothing stopping me from ditching it. And talking about apps, this switching business taught me a lot about moving things to Android. So I'm sharing more about that in my apps video, which is gonna be my next video actually. It's gonna be a dedicated video about specifically moving to the S23 Ultra and trying to decouple yourself from the Apple ecosystem. So stay tuned for that. Okay, Alex, that's great, but you're gonna miss the cameras on the 14 Pro Max, right? You know what? Yes, I will miss the cameras. And look, this is just my situation, right? I totally understand that for some of you, the camera on the iPhone is just irreplaceable. And I know it goes without saying, but take your own situation into account. For me, I did think long and hard about how much I actually use the cameras on my phone. And yes, I did rely on it a lot for videos and photos, like every dad, I need something that takes decent pictures of my family. But for the first time in many years, I can honestly say that I can use the S23 Ultra without feeling like I'm missing out on the iPhone camera quality or that I'm gonna miss a shot because it's too slow. Okay, the shutter lag issue, right? Let's talk about that for a bit. I can probably guarantee that not a lot of people out there using this phone may even come across this problem, but I'm not denying it isn't a problem. But you have to be in a kind of a low light scenario, trying to take a picture of something that's moving fairly fast. I don't know about you, but I don't find myself in those situations that often. Wait, no. No, never mind. And that's just for point and shoot stuff, right? What I also discovered with the S23 Ultra, which is amazing, is being able to take AK videos that don't feel like a gimmick anymore, you know, like the S22 Ultra and S21 Ultra, let's be honest, AK videos on those were really unusable. If you really know what you're doing, you can produce some amazing footage with this phone now. I say amazing a lot, my vocabulary needs work, but no, but it's true. I'm just showing you here some examples that I produced, you know, someone who doesn't know really what they're doing, mostly handheld stuff. And this is something that 
sure, the iPhone could potentially do too, but I'm not sure you'll be able to do it any better. ProRes video is fantastic. See, I know words, but it does have quite a few limitations when it comes to kind of people like me, like bog standard dads. If you want to see that picture outside the iPhone, you're gonna to need to know a little bit about color grading. You're gonna need some storage and a huge amount of patience because moving ProRes files out of the iPhone with this lightning cable, yeah, good luck with that. What about for vlogging? You're definitely gonna miss the cameras for vlogging, right? Well, let me break it to you in a bit of a vlog style video, whilst we compare both phones and also talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Having a presence online is super important these days, right? Whether you're trying to promote your business or like me, promote your content and your artwork or your music, Squarespace makes it super easy for you to do that. As you can see here on the screen, they've got this great in place to get you started. And it's really cool that you don't need any coding or website development experience. Honestly, if I can do it, anyone can. I've been a customer for many years and building a website is really nice, not having to worry about that website development experience, you know? I love the fact that you can create your own online store as well to sell your products and services. And it's super easy to add integrations to payment services as well, like Stripe, so you can offer your customers lots of payment methods as well, which is really cool. And not only that, they've got this new feature called the member areas, which I'm experimenting with as well. So you can offer subscriptions to your customers. You can get quite creative with it as well. You can offer different models of subscription, different levels of memberships. It's really cool. And talking about getting creative, even though they've got these templates, which are great to start with, you can really customize each page. You can add your own music, your videos, your photos. It's really quite flexible to make your own. And you want to know the best part? They're giving you a free trial. All you got to do is go to squarespace.com. And when you're ready to commit, you can go to squarespace.com forward slash Alex Geartech to get 10% off your first domain or your website. And thanks so much Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, I'll let you be the judge of that. But to me, the S23 Ultra not only has caught up with the iPhone 14 Pro Max in video quality, is also doing an awesome job with the audio quality as well. In fact, the audio quality out of the S23 Ultra really impressed me. You know, when I've been editing these videos, it really took me by surprise on how good it sounds. It almost felt like I was using a microphone. It's doing a great job of reducing noises outside as well, giving me a very nice and peachy sound, whatever that means, but yeah, it sounds lovely. Actually, if you agree with that, leave me a peach emoji. How about that? So to answer the original question for vlogging, this is perfect. Stable footage, great audio, or more can you want? Now the iPhone 15, which is coming in a few months, could change things, right? Well, let's talk about it. But before I forget, if you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'm not gonna ask you to buy my merch. I've said this before, it's rubbish anyway, but you can really support me by liking this video. And if you can, share this video on Twitter or on, on WhatsApp groups. Every interaction really helps. And after this video, have a look around the channel. If you like my stuff, it would be awesome if you subscribed. I'm not going anywhere. I'm here at least once a week with a new down to earth tech video for you. Right, can the iPhone 15 change how I feel about the S23 Ultra? To be honest, I'm not sure right now. Apple has a lot of work to do, that's for sure. We're starting to see some iPhone 15 leaks already, but I can't really get excited about it. These are still rumors, but you know, thinner bezels, a dark red iPhone, still has a monkey island, similar cameras, better battery life, woo. You know, maybe a better OLED display. Okay, that might be a good deal, but, but here's something that's dawning on me right now. The S23 Ultra is gonna be my main device for a long time by the looks of it. The software, iOS, I'm just so bored with it, right? Sure, it's fairly polished, as I said earlier, when it works, but you can't really multitask on it. I know it's not something that a lot of people do, but it's awesome that we can do, which is Samsung DeX. There's nothing in the Apple world that comes even close to that feature. So yeah, Apple would have to bring something quite different for me to go back. I can see myself rocking the Fold 5 and the S23 Ultra for quite a while here. For many of us, this is the end of an era, right? I mean, I just realized that that little vlog video that I did on the 14 Pro Max, was the last video I recorded on the iPhone before selling it. You know, I don't know how I feel about it, but I am excited to make the S23 Ultra even more present in my day-to-day -day life and what a combo I've got here, right? But with either of these two, I'll be perfectly happy. The bottom line is I've had every single iPhone since the first one and this, this is the first time that I felt like downgrading it is the best option for me. You know, for a long-standing customer like me to feel like this is the best option, it must be saying something about the current iPhone. And you know what's interesting? I've switched from Apple to Android before and back to Apple, but I realized that it was never a proper switch. You know, the 12 Pro Max in 2021 was still around. And whilst I used the S21 Ultra for nine to 10 months, the iPhone still did quite a bit for me in terms of videos and photos. So it's the first time since 2007 that I actually don't have an iPhone that I'd go for, you know, photos and videos. But I'm glad I found a nice way with the 13 mini to keep my Apple Watch and still enjoy the S23 Ultra. And I think my wallet agrees with that. If you haven't yet, check this banger over here. Really proud of that one, actually. Probably one of the best videos I've ever made. And if you've seen that one already, check this one here as well. See you soon. As far as brain farts go, that was not a bad one.